hey startup family hope you all are doing good good morning good afternoon and good evening to you all who all are joining us globally today i am parth varu event program manager for reactor bangalore before we begin please let's go through our code of conduct we are all here to learn together so please be respectful of other people views understanding of differences and being kind and the considerate in the way you all engage yes obviously we do encourage you all to participate please drop all your questions in a chat section and now as we all begin the session i would like to bring in our host vinayak and vivek for the session hey part hey vivek good morning hey vinayak very good morning to you all how are you all doing good morning all good i am at office you can see you know that's a nice background <laughs> Yep. You've yep. been office and today since morning 5:45 a.m. I guess. Yeah, I I think that will thanks for call out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh hi all. Uh I'm Vivek, um senior cloud advocate and uh thanks for tuning in to uh Scale Up Thursday show and we have Vinayak. Uh Vinayak, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vinayak Hegde. I'm the CTO in this sense at a team called Microsoft for Startups. Uh, and as you saw in the video before, I think our team builds um, help startups. And one of the things that we do is build founders up. So I work very closely with uh, founders to shape their technology vision and actually help them with people, technology, and processes to um, to grow and scale. So um, so today we'll be talking with one of our startups. Uh, So, uh, Parth and uh, Vivek, do you want to get Pranav from Professor Jim? Yeah, we have one more amazing startup on Scale Up Thursday, hey, and Pranav. we have Pranav here. Hey, Pranav. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me on the show. Hi, yeah, Pranav. Pra- Pra- by the way, Pranav is uh, ex Microsoft, and ten years back, right? Ten years back, you were in Microsoft. A lot of things. A long time. Yeah, you know, it's an inspiration. So you work for, you know. for microsoft after 10 years you become a founder I mean, just you know it's just a, <laughs> just a thing i mean i see you know your profile you've been a you know see a series of uh, you know startups you have started done and you've been working in in the ai i, I think i mean from the day it has been in in, a, in, in place right so uh, where we have already uh, all been discussing about ai almost like 10 years you've been working in ai uh it's it's amazing to have you today here and uh let's get started you know uh with 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 your uh, startup professor professor jim you call it or prof jim you call it prof jim prof jim what do you okay. guys begin the session all right first of all thank you for having me on the show uh it's a real pleasure to uh, work with microsoft and uh, a team like yours so all right let's get started uh let me start by giving a brief overview about uh, who we are and what we do and that will set the context for the rest of the uh, presentation as we walk through how we go about uh, building a product uh, with all sorts of technology and include, including azure so uh, we are propgen uh, our mission is to uh, bring learning to life using generative ai and the uh, we set ourselves a goal to make sure that we are able to democratize uh, education and bring uh, a lot of quality education to uh, you know everyone in the world so that is one of our you know mission statements so let me start by introducing the uh, for the team uh, i am pranav uh, i am the cto and the co-founder of uh, propgen I started coding at a very young age and uh, working with computers making things breaking things is always has always been something that uh, really fascinated me and uh, uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing uh, prior to propgem I also co-founded a company called flatpebble which was a, another startup and it was a marketplace uh, for uh, photography services at prop gym along with me there is also dr deepak uh, he is a prolific inventor uh, and he has over 200 issued patents and he also co-founded jawadex 
which was acquired by DoorDash uh, a few years ago. Uh, one of my other co-founders is Maria. Uh, she also, she's also a co-founder. She co-founded uh, uh, Candidly previously. And uh, she was also responsible for a very, very popular uh, uh, section in the Verily magazine. Uh, and it garnered millions of page views uh, every month. Nice. I think uh, a very star-studded team with, you know, like a variety of experience across, uh, complementary experience across the board. Yeah. So, yeah, let's maybe talk a little bit about your product and the problem space that, uh, you know, it's solving. So. Okay, sure. So, if you look at the education space, uh, you realize that some of the problems that occurred decades ago still exist in uh, exist today. For example, uh, and if you have any kids in your family, you'll probably realize that. What happens is that uh, in any given classroom setting, education seems to, or learning seems to move at the pace at the brightest kid uh, in the class. So typically what would happen is the teacher would ask, uh, would explain something to the students and they'd ask, uh, does everyone understand? The brightest kid typically says that, hey, I, uh, yeah, I understood everything. And then the discussion moves on to the next topic. And what often ends up happening is that only a partial uh, or only a portion of students actually end up learning, whereas others tend to get left behind. The other issue that then happened was COVID, and it just compounded the issue. Meaning, uh, what while well, students could ask the question in the classroom, you can imagine it's even more difficult to ask questions uh, 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 on, a, on a Zoom call. Sorry about that. And uh, the other thing that has also happened is we noticed that uh, the new generation seems to learn or prefer to learn a lot uh, by watching videos uh, over YouTube. And in fact, that is not just the kids, it's even the adults who are learning stuff. They prefer to learn over YouTube tutorials rather than reading a particular book. And I'm sure some of you may be able to even uh, relate to that. Uh, I know I personally prefer to use videos to learn because it's just a lot more engaging and it just engages a lot more senses and the seeing things in action uh, is a lot more easier to consume uh, than just reading a particular book. So a lot of things we identified as far as the education was be concerned that is uh, that has the potential to, uh, to disrupt and where we could actually make a change where uh, we could improve the learning uh, outcomes for students. So and this is as far this is only as far as the uh, the students are concerned. But there's an there are also issues from the teachers' side uh, side of things as well. In a classroom setting, for example, it's hard to teach a lot of things on uh, you know on, on a blackboard. And if you had to give any sort of experience to uh, to students to actually, for example, uh, let's say you're uh, uh, you're teaching something about uh, sea animals. Right, and if you want uh, students to get a sense of how different kinds of sounds that uh, a whale makes, for example, it's very hard to do that on uh, uh, on a real life uh, on a blackboard. Similarly, let's say a, teacher, a physics teacher is trying to teach something like the motion of a ball when it is thrown. It's difficult to, for, uh, for some students to visualize how uh, it follows a parabolic uh, uh, um, path, for example. But if we have an interactive system where students can actually play with it and they get a much better intuition of how things work in the real life. So we felt that a lot of these things using technology can be brought to life, resulting in better learning outcomes for students. So uh, that was one of the primary goals, you know, uh, we decided to start uh, in, in this direction. Now, coming back to a little bit about what we just... Uh... In the story of how the Buddha heard the Sutra of Golden Light in a dream, we have an account of how this Buddhist scripture Sorry. entered the world. Yes, the Buddha taught this. For example, uh, if you look at uh, current classroom teachings, the biggest issue that you find is that uh, the lighting is extremely poor. Uh, the audio is typically extremely terrible. I'm pretty sure you've gone through Zoom meetings, asking each other, spending the first five minutes, am I audible, am I audible, right? And pretty much everyone is uh, able to correlate with that. Uh, so it can, uh, the experience is extremely poor. 
the way around that would be maybe to use a professional setting uh, have a professional photographer or a videographer to record the sessions the problem with that is can get very expensive very quickly uh, our data shows that a typical 4 hour video from a uh, short professionally could cost anywhere between uh, 25k dollars to 150 uh, k dollars and that is just for a 4 hour session and even if you manage to somehow do that you still have the issue of keeping all of that content updated it just becomes impossible especially if let's say for example you have a course on ai you know the every other week you have something extremely new and it becomes impossible to keep up with that so uh, the all the traditional way of creating video content uh, is extremely difficult to say the least and that's where our ai and generative ai technology comes uh, into play so what we do basically is uh, uh, we can take in as input any text content uh, whether it's a book whether it's a wikipedia article or any content generated uh, you know or, or a blog post for uh, for example and it takes that as an input and it can convert it into a very beautiful video which includes summarizing the content it includes generating speech for it uh, creating an avatar uh, that animates uh, extremely well and so on it does a whole bunch of things and it also adds a lot of interactive elements you see uh, uh, later as a part of the demo and uh, having said that Uh, while all this is great in theory does it actually work our data shows that it does uh, we conducted a study uh, showcasing uh, testing with a whole bunch of uh, students uh, comparing learning outcomes out of a textbook or an instructor led video or video content created through our technology and uh, what the data shows is that there's a marked improvement uh, when it comes to consuming the data in the way we present and that's primarily also because uh, we engage all the senses of the user whether it's auditory whether student is uh, a kinesthetic learner by learning by example or by actually uh, you know uh, and for people with disabilities we even have uh, you know automatic captions which are generated so we are engaging all the senses uh, of a user when the, of a of a student when they are going through a video and that improves uh, the learning outcome uh, significantly so so pradam just go back one slide sure so here here your input is only text in, is it yes um, only text that's enough for us okay got it Should I? Do you want me to continue? Is there any questions? No, I think you can continue. I think no, we can continue. You have question? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. So while all this is great, let's talk a little bit about what makes it all happen. And the core of all of this is generative AI. Whether it comes to video or converting, uh, you know. Uh, text or images and all of that stuff and we use this in a whole lot of different ways uh, for example uh, once we have the input uh, as text we also we need to summarize it and uh, there are different ways that we do that depending upon the target audience but the idea is that you know we can customize a given input to uh, a, a particular type of audience and once that once we have the text it also needs to be converted into speech and uh, keep in mind that this is not just a regular text to speech but because we are dealing with a uh, whole lot of different types of audience or different age groups uh, the speech content needs to be customized for all of them and it also needs to be a lot more expressive than uh, what you typically find in a uh, normal text to speech uh, uh, technologies that are uh, of the shelf so we do a lot of that as well of course there are also uh, 3d avatars that we create and that animate very beautifully as well the other great thing is that all of this can happen in just a few minutes uh, depending upon the length of the lesson uh, it can vary 
from a few minutes to uh, a few hours tops, depending upon the length of the content. And at the end of it, what you get is a beautifully laid out presentation, which syncs uh, with the corresponding text and audio beautifully on the screen. So, so Prado, there is a question actually, which is related to this. Yeah. Uh, let me bring up. Um, the question is, uh, is whether it also produces images uh, as well. It does. Uh, it yeah, does. and it there was a follow-up question on slides, but yeah, you have already mentioned about slides, but it does images. It does produce images for you as well. It does produce images and it does actually in uh, multiple ways. So what happens is that uh, while we can look for open source uh, images, we what we also do is we generate images on the fly, which are copyright free using uh, uh, generating AI for images as well. So we have our own uh, custom trained uh, uh, models, which are designed for uh, educational purposes. So if you, for example, if you want to generate uh, an image of a heart, uh, we have our own models we can generate using a generative AI for that. Does that answer the question? Yes. Uh, also, yeah. I wanted to ask about the slides. So we're saying professionally designed slides. So uh, the slides that you're generating, are these like templatized or are they getting generated as, as images? Like, you know, maybe talk a little bit more about that. Like. Because you have a text, or are you summarizing the text and converting that into bullet points and stuff like that? Yes, we uh, summarize the text uh, and uh, the layouts are generated automatically. Uh, and depending upon the content, uh, we also look for images that match the content. And uh, either we get it from uh, a public source or we generate it and present it to the user. The user can choose uh, whichever image they want uh, of the selected ones that are presented to the user. And of course, uh, uh, these are all editable by users as, as well. Okay, so one other question I had is um, uh, related to um, uh, the text. Like, the how do you, how do you put the text? Do you just scan images of textbook uh, with the uh, or like in maybe some kind of PDF or is it like a flat text file? Uh, um, so, so how, we, what is the typical input tip that you have seen? So we take all kinds of input. It could be a PDF, it could be a, a web page, a blog, for example, or it could even be a, a simple blob of text. And we scan it, we identify, for example, uh, what are the headings, subsections, uh, and so on. If the format allows it, if it not, if it does not, we automatically uh, use the AI to guess. Uh, where the sections break up and automatically add headings to the uh, slides as well. So, for example, if a particular, there's a particular section that does not have a heading, we are able to generate our titles for that as well. So, we do that automatically. Cool. So, there, is a there is a question. Yeah, there's a question from uh, from the audience. So, it's basically, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm going and preparing a presentation and I uh, specifically on Azure App Service, I know what I'm going to deliver and I just need to give the input to uh, the tool and it will generate slides, it will generate a video for me and all those things, right? Correct. All you need to give is a URL and it takes care of the rest. Uh, that URL could be a PDF, it could be a web page, it doesn't matter. And just for audience, you know, uh, we did try this yesterday and we will see the demo uh, how exactly it works uh, yeah we will have a look at that all right so now since we spoke about uh, the content itself that brings us to the next step which is uh, the avatar that is going to teach and keep in mind that we are also ta our target audience also includes uh, uh, k through 12 kids uh, and uh, as you might expect, kids are more uh, likely to learn from people they are familiar with. So we are able to uh, create 3D avatars of uh, uh, instructors. And we can do that with as little as just seven images. And for example, what you see here on the left, uh, it's one of the course creators on our platform. And what you see uh, are avatars that have been created of that person. And uh, 
the technology is so accurate that uh, using Amazon recognition, uh, we are able to get close to 99% accuracy. And uh, for primitive phones, what that actually means is that typically at about 85% is when uh, 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 the, a phone is unable, uh, a phone is able to uh, unlock itself uh, with the avatar. So that's how close the avatars are when we convert the, uh, a human into an avatar. Okay, now, now that you have an uh, idea about what we do, let's go through how Azure comes into play between uh, all of this. And in fact, Azure is actually the core uh, infrastructure that uh, we use. We are multi-cloud, but Azure also forms a large section of uh, our entire infrastructure. Broadly speaking, uh, what we have is uh, uh, the front-end app is a React app and we use, uh, which is hosted on uh, your uh, app service. Uh, we are also using uh, .NET as the, the backend REST API and uh, our data store is pretty much uh, 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 elastic at this point. Now, because the amount of volume that is involved, uh, what we do is uh, any conversion process that comes to us, we push it into uh, Azure queues and uh, which then gets picked up by a backend pipeline, which does uh, much of the uh, heavy lifting, which is like looking at the content, uh, parsing it, summarizing it, generating videos, uh, converting into audios, and a whole bunch of the, the different things around that. And uh, uh, of course, once the video is generated, we push it to Azure Blob Storage, and that is backed by Azure CDN, which helps us uh, serve the videos to uh, a large audience in uh, uh, you know a, a pretty scalable fashion. So, <clears throat> at a high high level, that is our uh, uh, what our infrastructure uh, looks like. So, um, so can you talk a little bit about sorry, sure, sure, Vinak, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, how how you use Elasticsearch? So. Uh, Elasticsearch is basically used to store the raw content. And what that helps us do is, for example, as we pass the, the text content and uh, as we want, uh, as the slides are designed, uh, all the text that is there on the slide, what what is where and all of that stuff is basically stored in Elastic. The One of the reasons why we chose to do that is uh, as students are looking for a particular course and they're trying to find a particular uh, a piece of content where they want a concept that they want to understand. When they search for it, we are, it allows us to identify what portion of the which video and what portion of the video explains that particular concept and uh, uh, take the user directly there. So that happens. That's the reason we choose uh, Elastic as a data store, and because it allows a lot of uh, uh, search optimization on it. Okay, so um, so yeah, that is cool. I mean, uh, I just wanted to highlight that. So basically, if I search for maybe as a Pythagoras theorem, and there are maybe like three or four tutorials on that, um, what it will do is it will take me to the exact point in that video where it will basically it will seek to that point from where I can learn about that, right? Right. That's what it is. Okay, cool. That that's pretty cool. Um, also, I think uh, um, I think the other part of the stack uh, you're using Azure App Service and using .NET. Um, any specific reason why you use .NET? Uh, uh, I mean, maybe talk about the choice of the stack also a little bit. Yeah, sure. So basically, uh, .NET allows us to, uh, or rather, it gives us all the capability that we need uh, in terms of scalability, in terms of performance, and also the fact that it's a lot easier to find uh, uh, resources who are familiar with uh, with .NET. And uh, but the primary goal is that you know it's a highly performant and uh, it, it serves all our purpose. So that's the main reason we have uh, uh, chosen .NET as a backend service. Uh, Vivek, you have any questions? Yeah. So so Pranav, um, uh, how does the input work? So say for example, what is the source of input? So if I can give you a PDF, I can give you a URL or I can give you an HTML format or different Excel sheet maybe as well, right? So how does you, how, how, how do you take that as an input? And 
where exactly it sits. So it's directly talked to the Azure App Service and work through that? Yeah, so what happens is that it takes the input uh, and it pushes it into a backend pipeline saying that if you want to convert uh, this source into a, a lesson. So it gets pushed into the queue and uh, this is where a backend service kicks in. It goes and looks, looks at that resource, understands what type of resource it is, whether it's a PDF or a web page, for example. And then it starts uh, extracting content out of it. Let's say, for example, uh, and it does a lot of optimization around it. To give you some basic example, uh, we cannot take the content verbatim and start generating a lesson out of it. Uh, two examples of it, let's say, for example, if it's a PDF file, Typically, there might be, say, something like uh, a page number at the bottom of it, right? And you don't want that into the part of the lesson. So we have to do a little bit of parsing on that. Similarly, if it's a web page, you'll see stuff like uh, headers and footers and navigation bars and whatnot, right? We don't want that on the final lesson as well. So depending upon the content, it parses it for the first, uh, a first level parse and extracts what is the most important content on that particular uh, resource page or PDF, whatever the case might be. And then it goes through the rest of the process where it starts uh, summarizing content, transforming it, and so on. And uh, once we have the text that we want to convert, it goes into a speech pipeline, uh, which converts it into uh, audio. It also goes into an animation pipeline where uh, the character is made to animate to that text. And then finally, all of that, along with the actual content of the slide, is put together uh, and uh, pushed back into the system, which allows the user to see the final video. And I'll give you a, a demo. How about we? I give you a demo of it to actually see it in action right now. Yeah, yeah just so one question I had. Just one more question I had was, uh, you did mention that you know. Uh, you know there are videos which which is already there uh which is being from the uh, uh tutors right uh they have those videos but not of good quality it doesn't really come with that quality will this app also take in such videos as input and convert it into a better quality videos yes so uh, we don't do it right now but uh, it's something that is uh, in the works for us so we, the, the whole idea is that we don't want people to do and redo everything, uh, uh, right? And uh, uh, video is definitely one such place where, you know, we can bring in that uh, uh, that innovation. Cool. Right. So Prado, I think before we see the demo, I had a more of a workflow question, right? So once you have generated all of the text, the, uh, the slides, uh, the images, and also the voiceover uh, with the characters, right. Uh, is there a possibility that, you know, once it is generated, can I tweak it, like, you know, maybe the text on the slide, maybe add images, remove images, uh, maybe also change characters. Uh, so kind of, is, is there like a workflow where you allows you to kind of do that? Uh, so in some sense, like, you know, uh, you're generating the video and then the final edit, like, you know, if you, as if you are like a director, right? Uh, like your, your software in some sense is shooting the video, but as a director, can I edit? Uh, the content before it kind of goes live. Yes, in fact, that is exactly what it does. The, so it's essentially a two-step process. In the first step, it creates slides uh, and it presents to the user. The user can tweak it. They can replace images. It's, it's like making present uh, changes to any presentation. And once the user is uh, comfortable with it, they can send it as a render job and that gets converted into the final video. And you, of course, you can uh, do and redo it as many times as you want. Does that answer your question? Oh, yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. Let's let's go to demo then. Our okay, sure. Whatever the next slide is here. Okay, let's switch to the demo for a little bit where we convert it. Okay, so let me give you a first a demo of what the final video looks like. Are you able to see my screen yet? Yeah, we can see the screen, but it is blank. It's... Okay, let me share it again. Uh, give, give me a second to share it, please. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, I see it. A video? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a video. 
So I'm just going to play this video to give you an idea about what uh, a lesson that has already been converted looks like, and then we'll see how we actually go about doing it. Greetings. I'm Aristotle. Or at least no, I, 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 have uh, so I can hear the voice, but not the uh, not the not the video, not the visual. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me share it. No, I don't think so. That's yeah, give me a second. Yeah. I may have to enter. So while we do that, you know, uh, people who have joined, uh, while we set up the demo, if you have any questions, uh, please post it in the chat and we'll take them once uh, the demo is uh, being completed. Okay. Um, and and Vivek, I think maybe also you can uh, post a link to the uh, learn learn module also, which can actually help startups actually uh, both sign up onto Founders Hub as well as uh, you know there's a learn module for like early stage startups as well. Uh, yeah, so I think at the bottom of your screen you can actually see the um, the uh, the links for you know for you to actually apply to Founders Hub, which we just talked about as well. So uh, Professor Jim um, or Prof Jim is also part of you know Founders Hub, and uh, they're using this credit strike as you saw to you know good effect to actually uh, render their videos. And <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the architecture as well. Um, so I think we are ready to go for the demo. Um, Pranav, do you want me just make it full screen? Yes, yeah, sure. Greetings. I'm Aristotle, or at least I'm his AI avatar. You might know me as a philosopher, but I'm also known to be the first biologist in the Western tradition due to my work classifying animals based on their behavior and physiology. Speaking of which, let's discuss a matter rather close to my heart and to your heart. Yes, I am talking about the human heart. Now, the human heart is a finely tuned instrument that serves the whole body. It is a muscular organ around the size of a closed fist, and it sits in the chest, slightly to the left of the center. Your heart's main function is to move blood throughout your body. It also controls the rhythm and speed of your heart rate and maintains your blood pressure. The aorta is the largest blood vessel in the body. The vena cava is a large vein that carries blood to the heart from other areas of the body. Pulmonary arteries are I'm just going to move forward a little bit to show you some other interactive elements that we have. I stand. I believe that nature does nothing in vain. Let's look at the components of a heart using a three-dimensional model. Prepare to be amazed. So as you can see, uh, the part of the video also includes a lot of interactive elements. And this is something that we were, I spoke a little while ago, right? And this is what makes it entirely different from uh, a classroom where the a student can actually experience things uh, as a part of the lesson, as opposed to just watching. It. And uh, this is one of the examples of that. Uh, and as you can see, I'm just playing with it. And of course, there are thousands of other simulations that are part of the you know, part of our library. And this is not just uh, animations. We also have full integration with uh, uh, coding. So for example, if somebody is teaching a Python or Java, for example, uh, the students can actually write and compile code on the fly. They don't need to install anything on the system. So just like what, you, what you're seeing here, you get a code window, and you can write the code, compile it, and run it, and you know, actually play with it. So, it really helps people uh, get hands-on experience and improve the war, uh, you know, the overall uh, learning outcome significantly by doing it. This, uh, this is this is really cool, uh, Pranav. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, like, how do you how do you embed the interactivity, right? Like, I mean, we saw you actually, you know, moving the heart around, uh, you know, changing at different angles uh, because you have a video. So how do you integrate that technology? You have built custom components, or like, uh, what are you using for that? So. Uh, 
we use a variety of techniques over here, right? And uh, we, we can either use HTML5 canvas or mm -hmm. libraries like 3.js to do 3D animation. But we also allow, the, or rather we understand that a lot of this content has already been created out elsewhere. So we allow people to die if they have already have something to embed it part, part of the lesson and just use it. Else. So if you know that you already have an animation somewhere or, or you know, uh, uh, a piece of code, you can just embed it and uh, that works as well. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so now let me switch to uh, how we actually go about creating something like this. So one more thing uh, before we move on to the next, I think uh, um, I just wanted to ask you is uh, uh, related to the lip sync, right? This is something that we talked maybe earlier, you know, um, be before the show. How, how are you able to simulate that? Because it's actually quite good, right? I mean, obviously, I think you are the character and all, uh, you know, you're making the characters both from historical characters as well as, you know, in the teacher's uh, um, uh, photos as well, which, which uh, you know, creates this 3D avatar. But how do you do that? So it actually uses a variety of techniques to do that. And the beautiful thing about it is it actually relies uh, only on the audio, which means that we can give high quality lip sync even for uh, different languages. And it's completely independent of the actual language. So, uh, and it does through a bunch of blend shapes. And, uh, uh, but primarily it relies only on the audio to create the appropriate uh, 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 expressions, including the lip sync. So as also, the person moves from a, a, a neutral mode to something like excited, for example, uh, it involves changing, not making not just the lips move, but also things like eyebrows and the head shakes and so on. So it's able to do that uh, by looking at uh, uh, audio primarily. Interesting. So you're able to detect emotion and then take that uh, emotion in the audio, like the tonality of it, and then convert it into like uh, facial expressions, which is which is which is amazing, um, pretty cool. And I think maybe this is also a good time to ask. You know, like you mentioned, different languages. Like, what languages do you support uh, currently? So a variety of them. Uh, Spanish is one of them. We can also make them the, uh, do that in uh, Hindi, Tamil, uh, Telugu, and so on. we do support a variety of them. Oh, that's pretty cool. Amazing. So as long, so as, long as you have an audio file, in fact. Uh, from any source, uh, we are able to animate it perfectly. And the same thing about text as well? Summarization is primarily English at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, given an input, if you already have an input in other languages, uh, it's a, uh, it can transliterate and uh, generate the uh, audio for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's move on with the demo. Okay, sure. So uh, this is what our main uh, interface looks like. As you can see, it's similar to uh, any app where you can add elements and make modifications to it. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import a blog post uh, 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 you know the um, uh, the startup fundamentals on uh, you know uh, the Microsoft site. Uh, with this. So this is the blog post on your platform, and I'm going to convert. I'm of course I'm using some cache data here to speed things up, but essentially as it's as simple as uh, you know entering a URL and see how it goes from here. So this is where it, the input essentially goes into the backend pipeline. It's going to parse the content and uh, summarize all of it and create a uh, different slide out of it. And once it's imported, you'll we'll see uh, in just a few minutes, we'll see the content at the bottom. You'll we'll see how you can edit it. And ultimately, uh, I'll show you a video that is, the video has been pre-rendered, but I'll show you how the video uh, looks like. Okay, so, uh, this is a blog post that uh, uh, generated uh, into the site. So as you can see, it has found the uh, appropriate images for the content. It 
has uh, extracted uh, headings from it and uh, uh, you can see that it also uh, has text and of course you can make modifications to it if you like just like any other uh, you know uh, editing platform and uh, it does uh, what what i have done is i have taken a few different uh, 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 paragraphs just to make it quick but uh, in each of these cases it found appropriate images or if it didn't find it it would have generated the same image and of course you can make changes as you like now let us have a look at uh, what the pre-generated video of this thing looks like. I have chosen a particular character, but uh, once now, okay, so let me just switch back. So now that the user is is comfortable with uh, the slide making the changes, all you do is send it as a render job, and uh, that will uh, finally create the video. And the final video basically uh, looks something like this. Hi. And welcome to this course on Startup Fundamentals. Let's assume that you're here because you're working on an early stage startup or a startup life. You'd like to make sure you have a good grasp of essential starting concepts before you go much further. How will you know if founding a startup is right for you? For many startup founders and aspiring founders, there are a few critical considerations that can help to answer these important questions. Be a successful entrepreneur, you need to be passionate about solving a problem. Many successful entrepreneurs have reported that they would pursue their idea regardless of whether there was a business opportunity. They were that passionate about solving that particular problem. The road from startup idea to successful business is often a long one, with the typical time for launch date being anywhere from four to ten years. Bear in mind that few startup founders set out with anything like this commitment up front. It's entirely rational. So as you can see, the speech is also extremely natural and it's hard to tell uh, whether it's text to speech or something that uh, a human actually recorded. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can, the teacher or the user can change a whole bunch of different avatars and uh, uh, you know uh, create content. Or of course, they can always be themselves. And we are also able to replicate a teacher's voice to add that extra layer uh, where the students, uh, uh, somebody taking a classroom and the students would feel extremely natural seeing their teacher in their teacher's voice and in their teacher's style uh, even uh, taking the course. So it's, it's pretty amazing uh, how it all comes together. Nice. It's, definite, it's definitely amazing. Like it's, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> Like how how yeah. exactly this is happening, <laughs> right? So and you, then, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you so, see like technology, right? But but when it actually yeah. when it all kind of comes together, it feels like magic. And I think this is like one of those uh, you know aha moments. This is magic. Aha moments. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are two questions by, by the way, Pranav, from the audience. You know, uh, so one of the question is, do we have a free uh, trial uh, to try this out? uh today uh, like if somebody wants to try this out uh is there a way to do it or is it something if they contact you and you can give them access uh, we are in a private beta right now but uh feel free to shoot me an email and we'll we can work things out yes and and uh, there is one more question is um uh basically how much time it does it take to render this uh say for your Created slides pretty fast, but uh, how much time it does it really take to render this into a final video? So uh, essentially, it depends upon the length of the content. Uh, but assuming it's a one-hour video, say about uh, four to five hours. Yeah, I, th I think it's that's pretty much good, right? Basically, even if anybody is creating such content. Uh, would spend some time if it is one hour video like we always spend more than five hours preparing for that content uh, for sure uh, that's true. and the other that's thing true is and... also you know the updates is, is creating the first time is one portion of it uh, but what a lot of people miss is to keep that content updated uh, imagine trying to shoot if you're shooting normally you imagine trying to shoot the whole thing again over here there's no that's no longer the case let's say you have a uh, uh, a lesson on Excel. Tomorrow, Microsoft releases a new version. Uh, updating it is just, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
incremental changes that you make make to what you already have and boom you have a new lesson with the latest version in, in no time uh, this is pretty cool yeah yeah i mean i, I think that's what even audience i mean the pranav i don't know whether you're seeing those messages on the screen but there are bunch of messages which i posted like the audience are like it's mind blowing and amazing technology and wonderful wonderful no words uh, those are the messages we are getting from the audience as of now so uh, all all good all goes to you you know amazing product uh, yeah that's, that's in fact we cannot be excited enough to you know uh, bring this technology to users and make a huge change uh, to the next generation of kids where we think and we hope that you know they are able to learn much better much quicker than what probably you and i went through 20 10 20 years ago definitely i think this is uh, this gives her engagement you know that's one of the ways and there are a lot of people who love blogging and then creating you know video content and they could just blog and you know just use your tool to convert it into a video content and share it across uh, and there is lot of use cases Uh, which is associated with this so that's the thing so uh, any other questions you have in and i think there are questions coming in uh, as well just one second okay there will be comment section below video will it take comments and will it will respond to it i think i think people are thinking about new ideas behind this tool now uh, soon yes soon yes that would be my answer Yes, it is coming. Any more questions from the audience? Uh, I know there will be a lot of questions, and I mean it's a lot, lot of thought-provoking things we discussed today. Each time we do scale up Thursday, each time we do scale up Thursday, we see different different tools, different use cases. We, we always feel like, oh wow, this is amazing technology! Like, wow, nice to build all of these things. So, Prano, yeah, because I'm uh, getting uh, a lot of questions on the uh, AI front, uh, uh, can you tell, talk a little bit about the rendering engine? What are the like the different stages? You know, um, can you talk a little bit about the AI pipeline? Like, you know, how do you manage the models? How do you kind of upgrade them? That part as well. So, there are a whole bunch of them involved. Uh, some of them, uh, for example, uh, would involve uh, uh, the lip sync. Uh, some of others would involve hand gesture. How do we move them? Uh, move the hand depending upon what is being taught. So uh, we use a variety of techniques. I, at this point, uh, I cannot go into a lot of details for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, some of the patents are being filed for, but uh, uh, there are pieces of different models that go into just about every piece of this. Cool. um and in terms of the cognitive services so open ai you know how do you involve them can you talk a little bit about that as well sure so open ai is one of the pieces that forms a, a solution stack uh, where we use uh, summarization and all but on top of that you know there is a layer that goes uh, uh, into post processing the content and because you know uh, our content is designed to generate different output for a different audience uh, for example a simple a, a, a single uh, uh, blog or a lesson or a textbook can be taught to kids of different ages and it has to be customized to that particular audience so it goes through a lot of pre processing and post processing before that content gets converted into an audience of uh, a, a particular type of audience and keep in mind there's also a whole bunch of audience that may not even be uh, all that familiar with the uh, uh, english right so there's a lot of thing that goes on that make it happen but uh, uh, but in a simplified way that uh, that help create content for our particular target audience good good we've got a lot of talented engineers uh, sorry go make on make it Sorry. Yeah, please, please go on. Um, so yeah. I was just asking Vivek if there are any questions from the audience or if he has any uh, any further questions. No, I don't have any. 
uh, I mean, audience, no questions. It's just praise is coming all the way, like for Prana. <laughs> glad we, <laughs> glad people are liking it. And if anybody in the audience would like to join us, uh, we are actively looking to hire uh, talented uh, engineers, whether it's AI or some other fields. Please feel free to shoot us an email. We are actively looking to expand and hire the right talent. It's pretty exciting to work with. I can uh, promise you that. Uh, Supran, maybe you can also uh, share your uh, uh, details to uh, you know so that the audience can in some sense connect with you because uh, you're looking to uh, you know do that as well. Sure. I should I put my email on chat? Would that work? Yeah. Uh, just put it on the private chat. I'll just post it here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you, uh, I mean, for audience, if you have any questions, uh, do let us know. Uh, I think we are pretty much done with the demo and everything uh, from the uh, session perspective. Um, if you want to play around with this and you want to uh, see how exactly this works, uh, you can uh, contact uh, an Oprana or you can go the, into their website and uh, yeah. you know share your details with them. And they might reach out to you and uh, give you access and so that you can uh, play around uh, with this yeah, tool. Yeah, it's profgym.com, P-R-O-F-G-I-M.com. Uh, easy to remember, just go there or just reach out to me at uh, pranav at uh, profgym.com. I just posted the email to everyone. Awesome. Sorry, I think you the spelling is wrong. You might want to just update it to prof Jim. Got it. Oh, I did the wrong spelling again. Is it? Uh, yeah, if you just see the chat, let me just. Oh, you recent to me, is it? Oh, okay. No, I'm editing it. Yeah, so you can see on the screen, uh, you know, Pranav's email ID. So if you want to connect with him, you know, you can mail him there. Um, cool. I think uh, with that, if there are no further questions, I think we, we can wrap up the show. We're almost at time. Um, unless like there are any specific aspects that you want to cover. Uh, I think one thing maybe quickly I think uh, we can talk about Pranav is, uh, uh, I mean, we talked about it briefly about like who, what are the use cases, what are customers using it for? Uh, I, I think you briefly talked about it, but I think we can, uh, before we end, I think we can just talk about uh, who, who is your kind of target market in this sense, at least to start off with. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of use cases for this as you expand as well, but currently, what is like your target market as well? So there are a whole bunch of use cases for this. Uh, for example, all content creators, people who have a blog is one of them, but also textbook publishers, right? Uh, they already have content in terms of textbooks and uh, they would like to create online courses out of it. What, like I said, a four hour video, shooting a four hour video was anywhere from 25K dollars to 150K dollars. Imagine converting thousands of books using this technology and uh, making a, a, a course platform, for example, like Coursera. So uh, textbook publishers are uh, one of the, the other use cases for it as far as uh, the B2B segment is concerned. For B2C, typically it's blog publishers who would like to uh, try out uh, different channels to get different audience. So they might already have a blog, but they also want to reach out on YouTube. So uh, they can use the technology to do that. Since so they already have the content, we give them the video out of it. Cool. Cool. What is the typical pricing? Um, so uh, it varies. It can vary depending upon... Uh, uh, the volume but of course right now we are mostly just working with uh, uh, the b2b customers but that probably won't apply to you know b2c customers so since we are in beta we don't have an official pricing at this time but it would vary depending upon the use case essentially Good. cool I, th I think we don't have any more questions uh pranav thanks for coming on to the show and Thank this you. was really, uh, it was amazing. It was mind blowing and, uh, you know, a lot of learning, right? You know, uh, if I have to think, you know, just go back and try this, uh, and, you know, every day and see what happens on, on your tool is, is, is more interesting for us as well. Uh, 
thanks for coming in thanks for taking uh, our learn module and converting it as well you know i just gave pranav yesterday the learn module can you try this and see how you can generate it as a video and like pranav yeah i can we can do it so mm -hmm. it is like you know we are here i know that, that's fast it is so people who want to try reach out to pranav and uh, get get started with it uh, thank you vinayak for uh, being on the show thank you prats for hosting us thank you all for joining uh, keep learning and we are going to come back with a new set of startups uh, in march so see you then see you all bye bye have a nice